السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه جمعين Welcome dear students to the last session of Islam 101 We have gone through so much knowledge and today we will conclude this course insha'Allah because what I want to keep on extending it to such an extent that we begin to talk about advanced things. So inshallah, this is an introductory course. This is a beginner's course, inshallah. You will also have an um, uh, intermediate course coming up very soon, inshallah. Uh, in that course, Bithil Azawajal, you can uh, get more knowledge of Islam. And of course, there will be advanced courses as well. So, you know, keep on a lookout for those courses. All right, let's get into this, inshallah. Our last session today is related to rights. Because in Islam, there are rights uh, that, uh, you know, others have upon us. So let's talk about that, inshallah. Question number 88. What are some rights of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam upon us? I mean, we've already talked about the rights of Allah. The right of Allah is that we worship Him without any partners and that... Uh, um, yeah, that's that's about it, right? The right of Allah is that we worship Him without any partners. Uh, we do not commit shirk with Him. We do not do kufr. Uh, uh, we do not dis do not disbelieve in Him, and we worship Him. We live our lives according to His will, right? That I think we've been talking about for a while. So, question eighty-eight starts with the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Number one, we must love Him. Okay. Number two, we must obey Him. Number three, we must avoid what he forbade. Number four, we must uh, believe in him. Of course, that's the first thing. Believe in him, and then love him, obey him, avoid what he forbade. Number five, worship Allah, mimicking him only according to his path and according to his direction only. 89. What are some of the rights of the parents upon their children? Number one, children should obey their parents number two respect them number three being humble toward them number four treating them kindly number five spending upon them number six praying for them number seven upholding ties of kinship with those to whom uh, one is related through them number eight honoring their friends You may ask, what are the rights of children? Uh, rights of children. We're going to talk about that. That's coming up. What are the rights of a Muslim upon another Muslim? Number one, treat one another with mercy and compassion. Number two, love one another for Allah. Number three, sincerity, meaning be sincere to one another. Don't be too haste. Number four, relieving their distress, relieving one another's distress. Number five, concealing each other's mistakes. Number six, supporting each other when uh, they are upon the truth. So if the other Muslims are upon the truth, you support the Muslim. Number seven, returning greetings of salam. When somebody says, Salamu al Salamu alaykum, you say, Wa alaykum as salam. Number eight, visiting them when they are sick. This is a right of a Muslim. When somebody is sick, it is their right that you should visit them. Number nine, accepting their invitation. Like if they invite you to eat with them, you should accept the invitation. Number ten, saying, Yarhamuk Allah. May Allah have mercy on you to a Muslim when he sneezes. Say, Alhamdulillah. When a Muslim says, Achoo. And he says, Alhamdulillah. Then you say Alhamdulillah. If they don't say Alhamdulillah, then you should remind them to say Alhamdulillah. Once they say Alhamdulillah, then you say Yarhamukallah. May Allah have mercy on you. Number eleven, attend his funeral. Attend his funeral. If he dies, attend the funeral of the other Muslims, inshallah. Ninety one, what are some of the rights of the neighbor? Number one. Whether okay. Uh, so you know, neighbor may be a Muslim or a non Muslim, right? So uh, initiating of greetings you should greet your neighbor whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim of course if they're Muslim you say assalamu alaikum 
If they're non-Muslim, then you should greet them in their greetings, in the greetings that are um, uh, uh, that are common, that are uh, uh, customary. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, all of that. Uh, okay, initiation meaning you should be the first one to greet them. Number two, visiting them if they are sick, right? If your neighbor is sick, you should visit them. Number three, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim. Number three, offering condolences if calamity befalls them. If something happens in their home and you came to know of it, something wrong, something bad, something that hurt them, you should go and you should kind of sympathize with them. Number four, congratulating them at the time of joy. If they are, if they are, if they are, um, if a baby was born, you should congratulate them. For example, um, number five, overlooking their mistakes. Same thing. Right? If they make a mistake, then you should forgive them and you know uh, work with them and try to work with them. Inshallah. Number six, concealing their faults concealing their faults so overlooking means to forgive concealing means not to kind of expose them and all that number seven bearing his annoyance with patience sometimes you might have a, a neighbor that is just annoying and you know so you try to bear with patience inshallah uh, with them um, I mean there are nice ways of dealing with them but you know to go and fight with them to scream at them to kind of hurt them and all that stuff this is not allowed in Islam uh, number eight giving them gifts this is a good habit right it increases uh, harmony increases love uh, lending number nine lending him money if he needs if you see your neighbor is poor and needs help you should help them number ten lowering one's gaze from looking at his women folk so uh, if there are women in their home then you should not uh, yeah, this is just um, you know bad behavior. Uh, you should you should you should you should lower your gaze and you should not gaze at them. You should not stare at them. You should not you know um, you should not lust after them. Astaghfirullah. So you know lowering your gaze and respecting and honoring uh, your neighbor's women. Number eleven, guiding him to that which is uh, which will benefit him in his religious and worldly affairs. Right? You should. You can talk to them about Islam, for example, if they are Muslims. Um, you know, talk if they are Muslims. Alhamdulillah, I mean, you should, you know, you should, you know, it's a Muslim, so you should even invite them and you should sit with them and you should, you know, share Islamic knowledge with them and even, you know, guide them to the beneficial things in the worldly sense as well. Question ninety-two: What are some of the rights of children upon their parents? Good question. Number one, choosing a righteous wife, choosing a righteous wife uh, to be uh, a righteous mother. So a man should choose a righteous wife for himself because that wife is going to be a mother of his children, and a woman should choose a righteous man because he will be uh, he will be a father one day. That's the right. Number two, uh, to do tahnik with dates. So when the child is born, the parents should, you know, you should chew up the date and should uh, rub it uh, in the rub it in the mouth of the child. Make sure you wash your hands and you pro you know practice proper hygiene, um, personal hygiene, because you you don't want to you know um, you don't want to hurt the child with the bacteria. So make sure you wash your hands properly and. Uh, to do tahnik inshallah um, and of course <laughs> of course make sure the mouth is clean you know inshallah number three the child uh, should be given a good name a good name give a good name it has a good meaning you can always seek advice from people of knowledge to seek good names Number four, name the child on the seventh day after birth alongside with Aqiqah. Aqiqah is basically, uh, you know, a ceremony that's done 
seeking Allah to free the child from the fire and to guide the child to a good life and not a sinful life. Um, so Aqiqah, uh, Aqiqah is done on the seventh day or any other day, it doesn't matter. But the Sunnah is on the seventh day, like naming is on the seventh day, right? Aqiqah is when you slaughter a sheep or goat um, <clears throat> for the boy and for the girls. Two for a boy and one for a girl. Number five, shave the head of boy and give the same weight of silver in charity. Uh, usually people don't go and weigh the hair because, you know, um, they're very light. But, you know, um, what they do is they, they, they shave the hair and they give some charity, you know. They give some charity like in the form of money um, that should be sufficient inshallah. Now, uh, number six, to circumcise the boy. To circumcise the boy is an obligation. Number seven, a good education and upbringing, which include uh, uh, correct aqidah, beliefs, prayer, teaching the child prayers, uh, good manners, etc. Number eight, protect them from everything that may bring them close to the fire. Number nine, spend upon them. Um, spend upon them, of course, that's it, right? Number ten, treat them fairly. All right. And that, alhamdulillah, concludes our course. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, at the conclusion of this course, I ask you to accept this from me. I ask you to benefit me from this. I ask you to benefit the listeners from this. I ask Allah, oh Allah, we ask you to accept this from us and make this a reason for us to enter paradise. Allahumma ameen. Oh Allah, make this a reason for us to be saved from the fire. Oh Allah, oh Allah, benefit a lot of people from this, ya Allah. Oh Allah, accept from us. Allahumma ameen. And bless our families, our health and wealth, our children, our spouses. Oh Allah, give us all the goodness in this dunya. Oh Allah, protect us from all of the... Uh, evils from this dunya. Uh, oh Allah, protect us from the here uh, hellfire in the hereafter. Allahumma amin. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakum Allah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.